choke some. I am alive, thanks, Bob. <clears throat> Hello. Just making sure that everything is working. A couple minutes before one, so we'll just hang out here and wait, see if anybody joins. I'm in my dining room. My husband is flashing me in the kitchen, so we're off to a great start. <laughs> he thinks he's very funny. Make sure my notifications are turned off. Almost one o'clock, and that's when we will begin. Make sure everything is ready. So, if you want to start getting your supplies together, we will be doing watercolor painting. Couple examples here. That's sort of what our end product will be. One here and one here. Some of the supplies that we have and that you can work to collect now. Some masking tape. Painter's tape works really well because it peels off better. Um, but if you don't have it and you don't want to run out to the store and you happen to have some masking tape, that works well. I like to frame my pieces with the masking tape. I'll give an example of what that border looks like. Just gives it a little bit more of a finished look. I like to work within a frame as well. So the masking tape, uh, some watercolor paper, some sort of surface, either table, you can work on a clipboard, recycled cardboard, uh, various watercolor paper. So I've used some 140 pound paper. I've cut it into smaller sheets here um, just to make it a little more economical and to be able to make more sheets. Or I also have some 90 pound raw edge, which I really like because it has a really great texture to it. Obviously, watercolors, which require some water and some paint brushes in that water, various sizes. Another tool everyone can use today, crayons, salt. I like the thick, coarse salt. And we also have some rubbing alcohol, if you happen to have any in your first aid kit, or perhaps you've stocked up to fight germs. I have that in a separate little jar, and I also have a spray bottle for water and a sponge. So those are the tools that we can work with today. So if you want to work to assemble those, we have a variety of, obviously you can tell I like my watercolors, um, supplies. We'll work on that after we read our story. So our story for today is Raindrops by Vaishali Shroff, pictures by Ruchi Masin. Raindrops. It was pouring rain. Let me go a little closer so you can see better. Those wonderful, beautiful pictures. Anju stood looking outside her window. There was water everywhere. Black clouds crowded the sky. Colorful umbrellas 
dotted the street. Long needles of rain fell to the ground. Cars splashed water as they went by. Some people huddled under a tree. Others squeezed together at bus stops. In a corner outside a shop, a little puppy sat under a big blue umbrella. The wind grew stronger and Anju started to get wet. She held her hand out to collect the drops of water. Anju, come away from the window. You will fall sick, her mother said and quickly closed the window. Anju didn't want to come away. She wanted to watch the little puppy. Huge drops of rain now hit the glass and ran down quickly as if they were running a race. As the rain slowed, the drops of water looked like tiny pebbles, rolling, stopping, dropping. They made many patterns on the window. What kind of patterns do you see? First, a bird. Then, a cow. Now, it was a tree. The window was turning into a beautiful painting. Take a look at what kinds of things you see there. There's that tree on this side. The bird or the duck. What do you think this one is here? The cat. See there's a deer or a cow. What other things can you see? I see a lightning bolt. I see a horse. I see a camel. Anju stood on tiptoe and looked out. She pressed her nose to the window. Where was the puppy? There. Now there were two puppies fast asleep with their mother under the big blue umbrella. That's our book for today, Raindrops. And we are going to do some raindrops ourselves. Perhaps it's raining where you are. Looks like it's about to rain. Maybe it's super, super sunny and you wish it was raining so you could jump in some puddles. Do you want to come sit? Okay. And I have my helper coming with me. And if it's, if it's definitely going to rain, then we need to put our bikes in the garage. And that's one of our things. So here we made some samples earlier today. This is Sage. Wanna say hi, Sage. Hey. No, I'm just not gonna say hi. I'm gonna say hi and good. Morning, good afternoon, hello. So we made some of these earlier today to show you what we can work on here. So if you wanna set up your supplies, if you haven't done that already, we're working with watercolor paper using some masking tape from a cardboard box. You can tape that right on. Or you can use a clipboard, or if you have an easel or you just wanna tape onto your desk or your table, those are options. Go through some of the supplies that we have again. We have our watercolor paints. I'll tip this down so you can kind of see where we're, we're working here. Sort of see our faces, you can see her face, that's good. We have some absorbent cloths, which is really great for cleaning your brush or for dabbing to soak up some of our water. 
That's great. We have obviously water for our watercolors, brushes. We have some salt, which we can use as well. Sage is also showing some of our watercolors there. We have some white crayons that you can use. They don't really work. Wait, you know they work sometimes, right? Yeah. You have to press what? Hard. Really hard if you want that to work. We also have a sponge that you can use for getting your paper wet prior to painting if you want. Or you can also use it to absorb some of your watercolors. We also have some rubbing alcohol. We have a spray bottle filled with water. And a little glass jar with a rubbing alcohol on it. So we're going to do some painting. So Sage, what is the first thing that we need to do? Get it wet. Okay, you want to get that wet. We'll use our, our jar there of water. I'm going to get this one over to Sage. I'll show you. Here's another board. One of the tricks that I like to do when I'm taping the paper on is to leave a little <laughs> bit of the tape folded over. That way when you peel it up, it makes it a lot easier to peel. So when you take that, you can just fold the end down and sort of leave a tab. It's one of my tricks. So you tape those on. Sage yeah. is working on getting her piece of paper wet with her sponge. You can use a dry piece of watercolor paper. You can use a wet piece of watercolor paper. Either works, depends on the look that you're going for. She's clipping it onto her clipboard. <laughs> My board, I could have done it. Oops, that was clipboard. I don't think. There we go. I'll take that, sure. Thank you. So, taping to make the frame gives the your p finished piece a really nice polished look on the edge and I also like to work within the frame and to try to fill the entire space which is a really fun thing to do as well right so what's the next thing that we need to do Sage get a paintbrush get a paintbrush oh. I'm going to choose this as my paintbrush I'm going to choose this as my paintbrush that's the one she's going to use for her paintbrush and I'm going to use this palette as well I'm going to use this palette. I'm going to wake up my paint. Me too. Wake <laughs> up. Wake up. Get a wake little up. bit of water, stir it around, and start painting. I'm going to use a little bit more water, a little bit less water in some spots. You can see how you can look at where you put the paint into the wet spot, how it moves. This is really, really coarse paper, really thick, so it also is showing a lot of texture. You can leave a little bit of that white space, or you can make your paint even more wet. Or you can just start using it again if you want. Or you can start using it again. That's right, I'm reaching across here. You get to see a lot of my arm. We're just going to fill the page with our color. Sage has chosen to use yellow, but the yellow the first time turned out kind of like green, right, Mama? Yep, so she has sort of a greenish color, and now yellowish color. Yellow. I'm going to use a little bit of this blue, too. It's not really light. <laughs> no. And here we go. So we're going to try a couple of our different materials and techniques to see which result we like best. So now I have my paper entirely covered in one coat. Now I'm going to take my water and put some really big splotches. You can see the paint is, is running down, sort of like the water that was dripping and running down the window. So I'm going to do that a couple times in a couple different spots. I'll put some here. I'm going to let it drip and run down. I'm going to do another spot right here. I'm going to move this here so I don't have to keep reaching across. And I also the have my own water. So you also has her own water. So we're going to try one of the techniques with the rubbing alcohol. 
So after I've made my really wet spots here, I'm going to take some of my rubbing alcohol. I've put it in this little container and I have both a paintbrush for little drops and then I have this straw which I can use sort of as a syringe eyedropper which can make some really big drops. So I can see sort of what's happening to the page as I've dripped the rubbing alcohol. It has made a resistance. Here's one of the drops here. Oh, uh, it's coming in. Now it's coming and dripping off. So I'm going to do another drop up here where I had that water, dribble it all over, and sort of see what's happening as my drip. So I'm going to leave that yeah, off to the side for a little bit, and we'll come back to that as it, as it dries. You can see some of the resistance from the rubbing alcohol and the white space that it's made and the patterns that it's made. What do you think that looks like here, Sage? This one here. Mm -hmm. Kind of looks like a jellyfish, maybe. Sage is also going to add some rubbing alcohol to hers. I can put it here so everyone can see that. So here are the colors that Sage has chosen to use, and she's going to use some of the rubbing alcohol yeah. as well. She drip, 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 drips. And we'll see what's happening. It's dripping. What's happening where the spots where the rubbing alcohol were are dripping. What's happening to the color? It's washing away. They're washing away. So that's the rubbing alcohol. So we'll get another couple setups where we can see what other things happen with some of our materials here. So I'm going to get another piece. I have a couple. So we're going to do the salt. We're going to do it together. Do you want to do your own? Okay, so we're going to do our own. We'll set this off to the side to let that dry. And we have a couple more pieces of watercolor paper on the board. So I'm going to use this piece. So you're just going to use that type. I'm going to get another one here. We're going to now use the salt to see what happens when we use salt with the watercolor. So let's see, what color do you think I should use on this one, Sage? Um, red. All right, we're going to do a red painting this time and see what happens with our salt. Wake that paint up. Swirl, 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 oh, swirl. The one before the white is pink. Yes. We have red and we have pink, so this is a little bit of that blue still. There's some painting. Yeah, it has a little bit of the blue still. Oh, am I looking color at the <laughs> We're working on the same color. We're both using red. Any colors that you want. We use blue first for the, the rain. And we're doing nice, thick strokes. You can see in that really, really thick, rough paper. What happens to I'm the then pink? And the next one, I, I want that paintbrush thing. Okay, we're going to switch up paintbrushes on our next painting. Yep. So the next one's you. also going to be with salt. The right, next Mama? one's also going to be with salt? Okay. Do some, just some of that water there. You don't need to do it with salt, right, Mama? You don't. You don't need to do it with salt. You can do it with whatever you want. That salt is one technique. Let's see what happens you when you do use salt. Whatever you want, or you can just do it plain. Yep. Painting just plain. I really like stripes when I'm painting. I find it very creative. Creative. Yes, that's the word I was looking for. Creative. Paint and stripes. Now my entire frame has been filled, and so now I want to. See what happens. Oh, you're using blue water. When I add some salt to my. Could you please pass me the salt? So, this is a very coarse salt. Really tricky to open. Really tricky to open. So, I'm going to pour a little bit of that on there. Sprinkle, sprinkle. And I'm going to show. When we poured the salt, you could see the salt is sucking up from the paint. So I'm going to do a little bit in that. Oops, mm -hmm. that was not quite a little bit, was it? Maybe we should use the sprinkle side instead of the pour side. Either way, fun to experiment. We'll do a little light dusting and we'll see kind of what happens. Once it dries? Once it dries. So we'll oh, set no, that aside. I remember when we did the painting on the other paper mm -hmm. with, the, with the person. Yes. In the salt. 
picking up with the person as well. So that's another technique that we can use with our watercolor with a little bit of salt. I'm just going to set that down. We're going to switch. Switcheroo. Switcheroo our brushes. We're talking about stripes. Here's another example of just using stripes and watercolor and the way that you can also use a little bit of white space on that, which is fun. I'm going to switch over to this paper here. Take that down again. So you're just doing some pouring of the salt. To Ooh, that's right. Make my frame, take that and the top. Spread mine around. So you're just spreading hers around. I don't know if you can see that. She's spreading them around. I'll move that a little bit that way so you can see. She's spreading her salt around. That's one way to do it. Because I used the pour side. Because she used the pouring side of the salt. Here we have our paper. Okay. We're taping that down. She's showing. Would you like a teeny tiny piece as well? I can get you a teeny tiny piece. There you go. You can use your clipboard if you'd like there. And you can tape it down to the table if you'd like, or no tape at all. Hold my ends of my tape, that way when I'm ready to peel it up, it's an easy peeling job. I do not do that. That's fine. It's one technique you don't have to. I find that it's easier when you're yeah, removing it. <laughs> Let me get a little, she's putting the tape under her bum. That's another place to store it if you'd like. If you're in a chair, if you're not, or if you're standing, it's kind of tricky. Yep. So we're going to use for this one, the crayon, to make a crayon resist, white crayon on the white paper. We'll see what, what should I put on, what should I do, draw with the crayon? Mm -hmm. A heart. So I'm going to make a heart with my crayon. And I'm going to press really hard because we realized if you press lightly it doesn't work as well. So can you see my heart? Hmm. Nope. Let's see. I might write sage on that too. Sage. So there I am using my crayon. So now we're going to try that. You love me. Right? I do. I love you very much. So here I am waking up my paint in my circles. Let's see what happens. So I said, oh yeah, I want to use your. <laughs> what happens when we paint over with the white crayon? There is our crayon resist. You can see I made it really, really wet, so it's running kind of like the rain on the window. That's another technique that we can do with our watercolors and a white crayon. You can also use. Um, a uh, cray paw. You can also use a blue crayon. <laughs> you could also use a blue crayon if you but wanted to try it with then that. Then you'll maybe see it. And I'm just going to show sort of what happens when we take off our tape. Now the nice clean line that it leaves. And it's a really easy way to also display your artwork if you just want to frame it or hang it up. It already is framed. I'll take that one and set that one aside. But there we are. My heart is framed. My heart is framed. So now we'll do one with the technique of using the sponge to soak up our paint. So I'm going to flip that over to another side. And the sage is done with the masking tape. Well, actually, I'll do one without the masking tape on this. So I'm going to wake up my paint. And I'm going to fill. Paper, the color. Here we are. See some wet paint, some dry paint. Oh my, you're making it, Mama. Oh my, look at that. So I put some drops of water on there too. And then with my sponge, I can soak up. A lot easier when it's taped down too because then it doesn't bow like that. But with my sponge, I can soak up some of the paint as another technique if you wanted to make shapes and then have the paint run down on your window 
And that's another way. And I actually, I think I might take a little bit of this rubbing alcohol on this too. And just add that to give us a little bit of a extra I'm resistance on that paper, to make some shapes. Yep, you're gonna use that paper with your sponge. She's getting it really wet first. So that's another way that we can use that rubbing alcohol, the sponge. And leave that to drip for a little while and then let it dry. Mm, yeah. You're dripping it into my color. Oh, I was dripping it into her color. Whoops. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, there's not even any more color. So I'm going to go back to the first one that we did here. You sort of see how it's drying there. Looking pretty good. Any shapes that you see now, Sage? Oh, no. I'm still seeing that jellyfish up there on the top. Yeah. Maybe it's a jellyfish in the ocean. Oh, so anyway. Yes, Sage. Oh, and here's another one. Squeeze my reach. And this, I made it with the squirting alcohol. Yeah, that's one where we did with a, a big drop of the rubbing alcohol on the watercolor paper. So you can see the big shot that right out, didn't you? Yep, I shot that right out like the, a fire bowl. Yep. <laughs> Sage is using a very, very wet piece of paper. Oh yeah. With some green, just looking really, really good there. I'm gonna take this piece of reach behind you and show them how yours is drying over here. Here's the one that Sage had made with the little drops of rubbing alcohol on the Sage. Which way did it go? This way? Yeah, this way. Yeah. Um, went sideways. Not the right, but that's a really fun technique there. There's an ocean and the yellow sand. An ocean and yellow sand. And baby. Here you can see fish. our and baby salt jellyfish. And baby, and baby jellyfish. jellyfish. You can see our salt here. How it's absorbing. You can leave what? that until it. That was mine. Is. What is mine? Oh yeah. Here. <laughs> until it's totally dry, and then you can brush Ooh. brush the salt off. But when it's still wet, it's not um, ready to be brushed off. So and then there's. Sages with the salt. So thanks for joining us today. Sage is going to finish this painting here. I'm going to tilt it up so you can see and what we're going to use on the techniques with that. I'm going to do the rubbing alcohol. Yep, so you push it in, put your finger at the top, let it all hang in there. Oh, here, you want me to help you with that or you got it? Yeah, put your finger on really. Keep your finger on tight. It's a little bit tricky. Having an eyedropper would work much, much better. But you can still dribble. Maybe you want to use the paintbrush to dribble spots on it as well. You can also use your paintbrush to paint on it. Actually, I'll do that one as another technique. Can I show that one too? How you can paint with the rubbing alcohol because we haven't done that I yet. am too bad. I'm doing it. I'm going to paint mine, uh, tape mine down. Paint mine down. Paint mine down. I'm going to paint mine down after I tape mine down. Here we are. So my favorite things to do with watercolors is to make my frame. My nice straight lines. I'm going to show I'm going to show I'm going to show Leave my tab up. Just leave these peeled up because it's a small one, so I'll be taking it off pretty quickly. So if you want to use the rubbing alcohol Ooh. to paint with, uh -huh. what does that look like? Yes, mm. it, I used too much water and it went in. Oh, sometimes we use too much water and that's okay. Yeah. And, uh, so here's our... I made this oh, green one. There's that green one. I like that green one with the drops of the rubbing alcohol. And I also painted a little alcohol. And you also painted with a little bit of the rubbing alcohol. Just a little piece if you'd like. So you can do your dropping, or you can also do painting. And I'm going to do a little painting of uh, maybe a couple lines so you can see the way that that tilts it down for you again so you can really see how when you're using the paint how much that watercolor paint is resisting. <laughs> so here's where you can see how that kind of 
and let it drip. Sometimes I like to even turn mine over and do a sideways strip too. Give it a little tap. And maybe turn it this way and let some of that paint and water drip. See how it's still resisting with the spots where I painted with the rubbing out. I'm gonna let that sit and I might come back to it and think up some things that I see or shapes that I see in the window. So we're going to do a few more of these doing different techniques and here you can see some stripes behind if you want to do some stripes. Thank you. Yep, right there. Thank up you above me. Yeah. Right up above her. So thanks for joining us today. Hope that you enjoyed the story and learning about a couple different watercolor techniques and I Hope that you can share with us some of your rainy windows that you've painted. Until next time.